with the Twink Revolution. I'm Sam. And I'm Gian. And if you're one of our listeners still, even though we keep like <laughs> missing for weeks, um, hi Zach in Japan. Yeah. Hi our one listener in Dubai. Yeah, uh, we're really nice <laughs> to see all three of you back. It's lovely to have you. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Sorry, this one was my fault. Um, I got I got sick as shit. Yeah, poor thing. <laughs> I uh, it's not COVID. I kind of wish it was COVID so I could take um, Bolsonaro style. Uh, like photos of me <laughs> just looking Instagram. pathetic but but declaring myself stronger than the virus <laughs> um, but anyway I just got a fucking garden variety cold for the first time in like almost two years and it fucking sucks I like you can still hear my voice is all still raspy and shit people love the rasp though. yeah remember when we like had destroyed vocals mm-hmm. from karaoke and we had so many comments like the vocal fry and I'm like yeah. sorry I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be like clearing my throat through all this <coughs> You're welcome. Yeah. It's ASMR, cold edition. Anti-ASMR. Yeah. Um, a lot's been going on. GN's experiencing the beautiful summers of Wisconsin with twisters. Holy shit. It's amazing. And the destruction of his garden. Do you want to explain what happened? Yeah. So there was a thunderstorm that came through. And that's not unusual. There's been a lot of thunderstorms. Mm-hmm. This one came with unusually high winds. And there was like a tornado touching down just like east of Milwaukee as well, apparently. Oh, was there? Or like a funnel cloud or some shit. I don't know yeah. how shit works. Um, I'm from a, I'm from a subtropical island. It doesn't do this shit. <laughs> so uh, anyway, my, my beautiful tomatoes that have been like, they're in a, you know, basically spread across two raised garden beds. They're on stakes because I single stem them. And um, most of the stakes snapped in the wind like and it was fiberglass like fiberglass ones right yeah there's fiberglass stakes and like thick wooden stakes and they like they almost all just like snapped it was, it was ridiculous gian's face was sadder than like the like little african children on like the commercials where it's like for a dollar a day we'll feed you it was sadder than that yeah i i sort of um in a moment of self-reflection after that i sort of realized that uh Growing tomatoes had sort of become like uh, all I invested my happiness in. Um, <laughs> it was uh, I was I was quite affected. I've got to say I was pretty it was pretty sad. Um, and then uh, yeah, so so it was there was the middle of the night and it was like just fucked. There was like the whole my whole backyard was just like trash. There was just branches like giant branches coming down out of trees and like it just looked like a disaster site. But all the tomatoes were just flat on the ground yeah and i was i was like they're also like they're just ripening now as well which is like you know that stage where you're like okay we're almost there we've almost <laughs> made it and they're all just like snapped and uh so a couple of stems actually broke so a couple of plants like mm-hmm. were pretty fucked um and then it was nice sam and and my buddy jeremy came over and like helped restake them we went and got new metal stakes and restake them, and then I, I like put some grafting tape on like some of the stems, try and patch them up. Well, I didn't help with the staking. I helped that during the storm, like taping them. Yeah, you know, you came out and helped and me. And like helped me tape rescuing, them like your little like outdoor plants to bring inside. Right. I think everybody's a little worried about my mental health, uh, just because of how much uh, it's tied into these plants. Like the well-being of these plants and my my mental state are like really inextricable at these at this point. Yeah, You're this not. is definitely um, a gardening podcast now. Of comment, <laughs> like all of the comp our messages to Twink Rev are people's updates on their gardens, which is beautiful. I love yeah, it. It's good, but it's I think wholesome. it's like kind of hilarious because like who would have thought that was what happened <laughs> well i mean yeah uh it all starts off really if you think about like the failure of left leftist uh projects all uh goes back to the Chaz garden and yeah. the fact that you just simply cannot plant at that soil depth and uh expect anything good to happen <laughs> um particularly not mound planting those particular crops so looks like shit and um Anyway, my garden, after being flattened by like these, uh, you know, 70, 80 mile an hour winds or whatever, that were like blowing over trees, like giant trees all over Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, my garden still looked better than the Chaz garden, I should point out. <laughs> Here's had products, though. You're still getting like lettuce and like peppers and shit. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the tomatoes are doing fine. Some of them, some of the plants died, but like I got the tomatoes off them. And uh, some of them are still okay. So yeah. they're, they're back up looking. They're looking very healthy. They're about like eight or nine feet tall. Yeah. It's uh, the, the thing that sucks is I like 
can't reach the tops of these plants anymore to like pull suckers off or <laughs> stake them up further. So anyway, um, other things. Yeah, that was a little scary. No, just I was just scary yeah. from a, as I say, it was like the closest I've come to a full mental breakdown was like when I got out there and just saw all my tomato plants just flat on the ground. I was like, I can't deal with this. It was your Britney Spears moment. He was, was about, about to, to shave yeah. his head off. Like absolutely, yeah. Um, I've never seen you so distressed. No, I was pretty, I was pretty distraught. Honestly, I was really, I was not okay. And then once, once they were stood back up, like as I stood each one back up, I felt myself becoming a more complete human being again. Yeah. Um, I like, I was like, okay, no, I'm developing coping strategies again. Like, oh, this plant's okay. Like we managed to like stake that one back up and like, oh, this, okay, this one. No, I, yeah. I wait, I can experience joy again in the world. <laughs> and if it wasn't the car you're like oh it was all about the plants it wasn't about like the car was like five minutes from getting like a giant branch like smashed <laughs> on the windshield it was like oh yeah i feel like that would have me like well that sucks but if your tomato plants were hey, like the ripped fucking, out the car's replaceable that's a consumer product like, <laughs> whatever insurance or something like you can just get another one yeah these tomato plants like i poured my heart and soul into. you have i'm out there every day for like several hours of time I steal from my employer um because you know bullshit work from home email jobs so uh yeah no like I'd say 90 percent of my intellectual effort goes into these tomatoes it's true <laughs> it's where all it after goes um <laughs> um other things I know we're extremely late on this but I kind of went to market days and you went to market days sort of for the weekend. Sort of, yeah. I went to a bachelorette party, but we can talk about market days first. Like, do you know what was market days? Like, I was there for like, honestly, like a few hours. And I, I just got shit phase. Well, I, so, so to be clear, yes, yeah, so we got in on Friday night after much consternation. and You were uh, driving. I, I drove and that was a, that was a mistake. Driving, yeah, it turns out... Um, yeah, driving into Chicago was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And there was a baseball game on as well, which uh, for, for those not know, so Market Days is like the pride, but not on pride for the Boys Town neighborhood. Basically More body fascism. Yeah. Um, no parade. Uh, so anyway, it's like by, right by Wrigley Field, the home of uh, the Cubs or some shit. I don't know. I don't know baseball. And yeah, it is the Cubs. Oh, wow. You gave me like a the fuck are you talking about look and i was like yeah okay whatever there's the chicago cubs ladies and gentlemen bitch i look like this you think i've lived until like <laughs> fucking sports yeah I, I only knew because we were staying very close to there and everyone was wearing cubs jerseys and it wasn't a gay thing yeah um it, although it was a little difficult to distinguish honestly like people there for market days which is yeah like uh it's like a fest, a street festival thing with like lots of stalls selling like artisanal poppers and like sunglasses, sunglasses and, and fried food. And expectedly there's so much fried food. All the food was fried. And I'm like, this is the worst, like gay sex food. If you're trying to like, like where's the salad? Not, not the bottom friendly uh, food options, certainly. Um, and then like, there was like, some some faggots selling um their like homemade art like artisanal harnesses for twinks um that was kind of cute were they I, I didn't even look yeah. i was so busy like drinking my rose cider mm -hmm. and like trying to get at least drunk enough where like this was tolerable that i was like i don't know yeah so anyway um <laughs> the, 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 so that's sort of like the daytime market days thing mm -hmm. and then and then like all gay street festivals it attracts a sort of a party crowd who then goes to these surrounding uh big like you know gay edm parties we, circuit, parties. circuit parties where you, yeah you 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 know do drugs and have sex with strangers or whatever he didn't go to that i did not i opted out of all of that um and I like I don't even feel the need to justify why I didn't feel like doing that, except I just <laughs> didn't. I was already I was already like just kind of over being around that many gay people. Honestly, there was a lot more hot gay people. It was it was an attractive crowd. Yeah, I didn't Versus I didn't mind it. The SF audience does less for me. I require a little more like Roman Greco, like, like a little little bit of bap Adonis kind of like more more bap, bap media tab. Yeah, content. like yeah. market days is like BAP's um Twitter feed, but like 
in person. Yeah. Also, RIP Bappy's banned from Twitter. Mm. <laughs> well, what am I meant to jerk off to now? I yeah, mean, he's the I, best gay I mean, poster. sorry, where am I meant to get my uh, deep political analysis with weird transpositions of V's and U's or whatever? Some Caesarism. Also, people don't know, it's um this Twitter account named Brown Jage Perver, and he write, wrote a book about like... It was one of the best-selling books of the year, Sam. Don't there? insult the intelligence of our audience. These are sophisticated people who pay attention to the New York Times bestseller list. Thank you very much. Our crowd's hot. They don't our pay three attention pe- to Twitter. Our three listeners yeah. remaining. Um, yeah, hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, so anyway, um, I got sick in Chicago. And yeah. yet again, I just wanted to stress, I didn't go to the sex party. Yeah. Uh, I could have. I was not, you know, no, nothing stopping me going. But I didn't go. And yet I still got a fucking cold in Chicago, which is why I sound like this. I went, I was there for Friday and I went to my first ever bachelorette party we did not go to a gay bar, so we were not those people, but they had permission because I was there. Um, literally one of the worst hangovers I've had <laughs> in like the last like five years. Yeah, and I saw like, you hours later and you were still just like a zombie. I had to like, so I took a Greyhound bus and an Amtrak train to get to my friend's bachelorette party from college in like northern Wisconsin from Chicago. And I'm like, okay, I haven't eaten all day. The first thing in the thing's like Mexican food. And I drink like a margarita before mm. I even eat because oh, like... Margarita on empty stomach is a dangerous territory. They like miss... Our podcast <laughs> listeners will know what a dangerous recipe <laughs> that is for me. They miswrote the name. So they took a little longer to get us our table. It was like... I'm not going to mention names. So I don't want to... Um, they were like trying to figure it out. Like, oh, we don't have a name for this, but a name that sounds exactly like it, but not for wrong letter. <laughs> so like we got margaritas first and I was smart. I only had one. But then I was like, well, we got to get like her like turned. It's her one bachelorette party, hopefully her only one. <laughs> so I'm like um, buying shots and like I had a drink called a Russian, which is like literally just champagne mixed with vodka. Oh, God. And like the, the worst combination. And I wake up at like eight in the morning, hung over as shit. I lose my credit card. Um, that was great. Um, <laughs> and I'm taking an Amtrak where you have to wear a fucking mask still. And I'm like burping this horrible thing. Cause, like I rushed dress. So I'm like my heat weren't brushed or anything. I'm just like on a bus for like four hours. And I literally was like, I'm glad I'm not vomiting on this bus. It was the worst experience ever. I once um very hungover on a plane. Uh, like didn't quite vomit into my mask, but like, <laughs> But kind of like there was a little bit in my mouth and a bit of it like I kind of drooled into my mask. It was one of the most uh, like unpleasant experiences I've ever had. Uh, yeah, I thankfully had a, a spare mask in case anybody wonders how that story finishes. Um, any highlights from the bachelorette party? I've never been part of a bachelorette party. Actually, sorry, that's a lie. I did once, but it was like it was like a bougie cocktail thing in New Zealand many, many years ago. Um, I don't know. We danced a lot and like did a lot of shots. It was very like, it reminded me of my college days of like people who have like actual jobs and stuff now. So like everyone is like a lot of people, like people were like coworkers of my friend. So they had like, chill, but, like they're all like slamming these drinks and drinking hardcore. But you were, in, you were in sort of uh straight venues. Oh, it's so all I'm, straight. Yeah. So what I'm curious about is like, I know how, how the men respond to bachelorette parties and gay bars how do the men in straight bars uh, respond to bachelorette parties? Was um, there male attention, engagement? Th- um, a lot of people giving the, the bride to be uh, like hugs from men and women, congratulating her. And a lot of actually women would be like um, asking about the shirts because the theme, like the, so you know, the party was different food items, kind of like a big buffet. The theme shirts. Yeah. Was- it was great. Um, and you're like, I've asking, never participated in anything to that degree in my life. Hey, I'm committed. Um, it you're was, just a better friend than I am. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> um, but you were asking about that and you're like, oh, I love that. And it was, it was good. I don't know. People were very like celebratory. It wasn't like you fucking people. Cause like <laughs> you're co- to occupying our spaces, our queer spaces. Like, the girls were acting no different than they would at like a regular Wisconsin gay bar. It wasn't like annoying, like, oh my God, I'm in a gay bar and I'm going to spill my drink all over these stupid fucking twinks because yeah. I'm like going to make out with them 
forcibly. It was very much chill. It was like just dancing, doing some shots, um, having some drinks. It was fun. It's good. Yeah, you did good. It was good. Um, <clears throat> and well, I have. Do you want to give a rating out of ten for the bachelorette party? Because I have a rating out of ten for market days. I'm gonna give it a solid nine. Okay. Yeah, I would give market days like a solid um, three. Actually, yeah. no, that's un that's uncharitable. I'd give it a four because I did end up catching up with some some uh, valued friends from SF who were in town for it. And then also uh, a few a few Chicago people who are valued Twin Crev uh, be- beloved listeners and fans. And we saw Eric from Red or Red Lettuce. Yes, and well, I, Red well, I saw him, I saw him for about ten minutes because I was drunk and hungry, and I left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> was I wasn't trying to be rude? I was just uh, very very drunk in the corner because <laughs> I hadn't really eaten. Um, Skinny. Yeah, it wasn't unintentionally skinny. Well, um, there's honestly, uh, God, I'm surprised we managed to go this long that I couldn't just burst the seams because I'm just <laughs> too excited about talking about this. I have not stopped laughing, like to the point of my ribs hurting for 24 hours now. Um, I just can't stop because um, everybody's favorite. Um, Anarchist Ivy League Vanity Socialist Magazine, Current Affairs Magazine, uh, the editor of which, um, Nathan J. Robinson, uh, is, you know, maybe a... I don't know if he knows who the fuck we are, but uh, we certainly know who he is and uh, despise him, honestly. Just to, this is this kind of bourgeois leftism... Um, of all people, yesterday, Matt Iglesias of Vox got a good Duncan. <laughs> really? Where he posted yeah. a picture of Nathan J. Robinson, you know, dressed as a fucking, like... Um, peacock? As a peacock or something, and saying, like, actually, I'm... Um, I reject Marxism, uh, and I'm, I'm a follower of the 19th century social theorist Fourier. Oh, I saw that. Um, I was like, gee, if, if, Matty, if Matty Iglesias is getting good dunks in, then... Um, you know, you know it's bad. So anyway, this was uh, this is the setting. I also want to point out um, or give give credit where uh, people have started repeating the line of calling him the plantation riddler. That was first coined by uh, three time Twin Grev guest Amy Therese on this very podcast. Is she still the record holder? Uh, Mila has has exceeded her, I believe. Mila's been three or four. You're right. I think they're tied, actually. The Lebanese women stay winning. In. Yes. Girl um, boss. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Amy, yeah, Amy came up with the calling Nathan J. Robinson the plantation Riddler, which will make sense if you know the Riddler character from Batman and what a plantation owner would look like, because mm-hmm. that's how Nathan J. Robinson dresses, despite being, you know, in his like, late 20s. Very Willy, Willy Wonka-ish. Yeah, so the various Willy wonka theme dunks. So anyway, current affairs... Um, one of their editors. Should I just read um, it? Yeah, if you just want to go ahead and okay. read the statement. I don't know her name. It's like Lida Gold on Twitter. I think it's Lida Gold. Yes, I, um, I think that's her actual name. Oh, I don't know. I don't read fucking current affairs. Um, but she tweeted, I am grieved to tell you that Nathan J. Robinson has effectively fired me and most of the current affairs <laughs> staff because you were trying to <laughs> you were trying to organize into a workers' co-op. <laughs> this isn't a bit. I wish it was. <laughs> It is a bit though. It's so funny. Well, I think it's funnier <laughs> because there's a line. Let me find it. Um, I stop. It hurts. <laughs> God, I'm gonna break some. I'm gonna break some. This, this one line is really funny. We, a small staff, can post entirely of women and non-binary people faithfully <laughs> work to make current affairs the beautiful, engaging leftist magazine and podcast that it is. And I'm like. What kind of crystal meth are you smoking? Because, like, get me some. Like, this is, like, imagine being that delirious. For one, like, the worker co-op thing's, like, such stupid anarchist shit. Well, as but so this is where people were... Um, they already have a union. Yeah, many reactions to this. Uh, so she, she explains that, um, you know, they've been having all these meetings about democratization and... Um, you know, workplace democracy or something. And then <laughs> Nathan J. Robinson uh, 
basically got sick of their bullshit and fired almost all of them and said he he is the boss and it's his magazine um the thing is that, you know look i i you know we um think stalin did nothing wrong so clearly not uh anti-authority yeah I actually don't you know i put it this way if it was if this happened to anybody else um, you'd be like, oh, this is weird. Like, this is what you get for hiring a bunch of like just histrionic Ivy League ladder climbers. Mm-hmm. The problem is that Nathan J. Robinson is a fan of the 19th century social theorist Fourier um, and thinks Marxism is bad, bad authoritarian Stalinism or something. And so he's the guy that has been pushing this line on the left for a very long time of saying like, the only true socialism is actually worker co-ops mm-hmm. um, and anything else is bad man, Stalin twin 20th century evils of Nazism and fa- and it's of, of, you know, Nazism and communism. Um, he's that guy. So the thing is the people he fired are also just absolute Ivy league dipshits. They're all like Harvard law yeah. dipshits. The kinds of people who would point out their, their staff was composed entirely of women and non-binary people. So this could not have happened to a nicer group of people. I'm overjoyed yeah. that they lost their shitty, like fucking resume polishing bullshit socialist magazine jobs. But the problem is Nathan J. Robinson is also a fucking asshole. And he was backed <laughs> into a corner of his own stupid, like sucking Chomsky's dick kind of rhetoric which What's, he's been pushing is a long time of being like, I'm actually a libertarian socialist. So I'm a I'm, prudonist. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's just a, he's a, he's a dipshit, like, you know, aspiring tenure track. Um, he has three Ivy league degrees and his, his most animating issues are student debt cancellation and like anti authoritarianism. Yeah. He once wrote 30,000 words about how he didn't understand Zizek, which like, Props to you, my friend. It's just like imagine if Melania was like a really unattractive man who has a lot of sex with hot women and like a lisp. Yeah, it's all it's all the same the same thing. Yeah, um, Nathan J. Robinson once also did a debate on like capitalism or something with like some chud from the Cato Institute. Oh, it was so and, bad. And honestly, I'm not sure who won. Cato. Um, Maybe, like, honestly, because once you... They get laid, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I would know. Better I've drugs been. at their parties or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I, I just have nothing but disdain for, for what is entirely, like, in another era, right, um, Nathan J. Robinson would have, I don't know, started a, 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 a fucking orienteering club or... <laughs> like whatever the fuck else you do to like pass the time until you take up a partnership in your father's law firm or some shit. But like, this is what he's doing because this is the world we live in. Yeah. The post occupy world is where you like, you better polish some activist credentials to explain why you speak with a fake British accent and wear a fucking fedora and have attended multiple Ivy league universities. Um, and why you really, you know, you're, your conveyor belt to the ruling class is completely guaranteed, but you better like, um, like you better look at your shoes and shuffle a little bit embarrassedly on your way there, which is what current affairs magazine is for all of these people. Well, it's even sadder because like current affairs of like the few left wing or democratic socialist or anarchist, like mainstream publications is probably the one that's like actually like genuine while the rest are like just complete and other apps like Jacobin, like TYT. Jacobin is funded by the CIA. Yeah. Like, change my view. I like, I, I am 99% sure. Well, haven't they also had like labor issues as well? If like their staffers complaining and like, I mean, TYT like prevented a union. <laughs> yeah. well, TYT is such a different beast. Like, but it's like the origin. I feel like TYT is... It's the template for how you build a media career as a sort of like permanent leftoid um, where, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you're right. It's it's a, your sort of outsider status is always like one degree to the left of wherever the, the 
consensus is. Um, and so just just to, to, to finish the thought, I mean, so Chomsky is the famous other person who's the quote unquote libertarian socialist, right? Mm-hmm. Has occupied tenure, like tenure positions in universities uh, for five decades now, I think. Um, so like just actually more. Maybe it's probably coming up it's, 60 years now. Yeah. Um, he's like 90 something, right? He's in his early 90s now, right? And so like, think about how impotent you are. Like, I would defend sort of Chomsky having some sort of um, brave outsider opinions on like the Vietnam War, maybe. Iraq. Nah. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, he was anti-Iraq. Yeah. But, but keep in mind that like... Um, Yugoslavia. Also, he was actually one of the few voices. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll give him credit for like honestly some stuff. And like people need to stop like digging up his corpse and violating it. Um, the, the poor guy just stopped doing elder abuse. Uh, but anyway, so the point being like being able to sort of maintain that um, outsider line. Mm-hmm. They keep in mind was basically like a Democratic Party line, and Chomsky's Chomsky has proven over and over again, particularly as he's got older, that he's just a Democrat. Yeah, but you get to be like, well, no, I'm a libertarian socialist. I'm actually an anarchist. Um, there, these are equivalent terms for those who are confused about this inside baseball of like leftoid losers. <laughs> um, so these are these are anarchists, right? And yet, like, what more establishment figure could you be than a tenured professor for decades and decades at MIT? Who writes for, like, New York Times and stuff. Right, who, yeah, who never never has had a trouble having their opinions published in, you know, yeah, the New York Times or The Guardian or whatever. Um, so Nathan J. Robinson is, is, has modeled himself after this. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what he is. His politics are Chomsky's. He corresponds with Chomsky in a sort of, flagrant example of elder abuse fairly often um and then uses that to kind of or parlays that into a sort of dunking on figures like you know glenn greenwald who also is you know conversant with noam chomsky i think they're friends yeah yeah, yeah i think i think uh i think the funny thing is that um chomsky was sort of baited into saying that he like reluctantly agreed to the proposition that glenn had changed and then i think these days, I feel like Glenn has spent more time defending Noam Chomsky's legacy. Yeah. Where he's like, just ignore everything he's said the last <laughs> three years. No, like, honestly, he's really a cool guy. Um, it's one of those, like, looks looks good on his resume and bad on, you know, bad on Glenn. I mean, retiring oh. the activist people, I think it's good. I mean, I think one of the reasons, like, people I like are still so favorable is because... I don't hear about him anymore, even though they're alive. Yeah. Like I think Parenti? Like Michael, Nothing. Michael Parenti Not is a also peep. one of those big anti-war left wing voices. He's retired. You can't find him for interviews anymore. You can't do anything. Yeah. And Alexander Coburn had the good sense to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, rest in peace and all that. But also like, yeah, not going to hear a fucking peep about out of him endorsing Kamala or Hillary. Yeah. So you know what? Like legacy saved. Like even if they are alive and like they think that, I don't want to hear it. Like you know what I mean? Like I'd rather yeah. just like they let me hold on to the memories. Stop at a high and just like go from there. Right. I um, like Twink Rev. Just keep going until like someone <laughs> thanks you just got <laughs> Yeah, until they usher you into the home. <laughs> They're just like, Yes, yes, that's nice, dear. We'll yeah. be like seven years old. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Twink Rev. Rev. <laughs> I want you kids to get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> I'll get someone like these days. Let's talk about prune juice. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but also, fellas, like, is it gay to drink prune juice? <laughs> I don't really care. I'm glad they all got fired because it to help, like, it basically destroys all of them in the end. And, like, the factor is still, like, begging for like approval after they're fired. I'm like, who cares? Like you're all horrible. Well, there was a people. cash app link as well, which just made me laugh hysterically. I was like, I'm sorry if the, you know, this like, you know, Nathan J. Rumson had to, had grown to be a, um, a pretty significant employer. Uh, he was, he was, you know, he's a, he's a job creator. He's an, an entrepreneur. Um, and yet again, I don't want to be the guy criticizing him for wanting 
to exercise authority over a project. Yeah. Because I'm not an anarchist. I, I, I genuinely believe that there's value to centralized coordination and leadership and, you know, consulting consulting experts, but also having decision makers who are sort of accountable for those decisions and things. I think those are all good ways to structure group activities at, at, at the level of, you know, both like production, but also at the level of societies. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with all that. I think that's good. Um, Nathan J. Robinson doesn't. He bleats wildly about how that's bad, bad, bad man, Stalinism, Nazi, fascism. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, in between like convincing people to vote for Joe Biden or whatever, and, uh, you know, th th this, this applies to Chomsky just as well, right? Where you can just be this sort of like impotent outsider where you get to just sort of moan about um, any position to the left of yours and sort of impotently rail against any position to the right of yours. But then the, 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 the position you end up taking in your, in your true principled anti-authoritarianism is the line of the Democrats. And to yeah. literally explicitly support Democrats or tacitly support anything the Democrats are doing as like a lesser of two evils thing. So like, fuck you. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Fuck you and the, the gay fucking <laughs> plantation riddler, Willy Wonka, Oompa Loompa fucking horse you rode in on, Nathan J. Robinson. Also, personally, I think media on the, like, on the left needs to be even more authoritarian. I mean, look at... Get a party line, bitch. Think of things like Mother Jones and stuff, which mm -hmm. were extremely radical, and now are like Hillary Clinton is actually a girl boss, yes queen. It's like oh, all like these God, historically like quite left wing and like Marxist media are all just like even the democracy now and stuff are all kind of like puppets for like the Democratic Party. And it's like you think you think democratizing it for a bunch of like Harvard and Yale grads will make it better. It'll just make it like CIA linked, like within like a week. Yeah. But like for free, because they wouldn't even be like funded yeah, they to don't do get it. Paid to do it. So did I tell you about the embarrassing week I had um, where I was getting a little bit nostalgic and mushy about like print media? This is quite a few years. This is maybe three years ago. Is that when you were buying in New York Times? Yeah, so so this is like, and like, feel free to just mock me <laughs> ceaselessly about this because I cringe. But I, so I remembered a time when I was younger because, um, you know, I'm old. Um, but I, I'd like, we're actually open, opening a newspaper. There was a certain pleasure to it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of enjoy, like, I enjoyed the ritual of it, even if, like, what was in it was trash. And even at the time, most of it was trash. And, and you know, I was buying, like, a local newspaper in New Zealand, which like the lowest quality you can get. They're just pulling like wire, like, you know, Reuters wire service articles on anything international. Then about local politics, they just have some like absolute fail child uh, writing like, you know, about the, the mayor feeding ducks or something. Yeah. So I already knew this was trash, but I liked the ritual of it. I liked the idea that sort of there was like, this is the narrative. Um, and now you can kind of react or orient yourself to the same narrative that everyone else is being fed. Yeah. And like some accept it, some reject it, but, but we all know what it is. We know there's one dominant narrative. So I got a little like little, little nostalgic and weepy about that. And um, I was like, well, I wonder what the New York times is actually like these days. <laughs> so I literally like bought a, a print copy of the New York times and I think it was like around my birthday or something. I told people like, oh, you can buy me like a, subs a magazine subscri subscription. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with like, this is, about, this is probably like, God, I want to say like 2016, 2017. Yeah. Um, I ended up with a subscription to Mother Jones for a year. Oh, God. And holy shit, that one went straight into the trash, uh, like very quickly. I read one episode. <laughs> what, and like, you know, I'd give them credit for like occasion. They had some interesting pieces. I think I got also like um, Harper's. I think you had, didn't you have Jacobin and Current Affairs for a bit? Well, no, too? Jacobin's way more embarrassing. That was in 2015. I I bought a lifetime subscription to Jacobin, thinking like, oh my god, they're like, and keep in mind, I was like a bit of a weird trot still. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh my god, like wow, they're like this like cool democratic socialist publication. I really want to support this. This seems so sort of nascent and interesting. So yes, I, I, I paid for a very, I, I don't know, I think it was 200 bucks to subscribe for life to Jacobin. Yeah. 
And eventually, um, you know, not that many years later, I had to like write to their subscriptions department being like, how do I cancel a lifetime subscription like, without <laughs> dying? I don't, I do not want this anymore. <laughs> Because um, it would just go straight in the trash. Yes. Uh, I did subscribe to Current Affairs as well. Uh, pretty early, I remember throwing early this early away there, when I, I was a few during the COVID era. Yeah, yeah. They you were, you come were and I'm like, house. so garbage? And you're like, yes. And yeah, we just unopened. drop it in. Yeah. <laughs> we recycled, um, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. No, well, the thing is like, it was one of these things where at a time when um, just the idea that there was a like a left-wing media that wasn't the nation. Because keep in mind, like I already knew the nation was trash. Yeah. So Current Affairs, like, yeah, it was it was cool and why was it cool? Because there was sort of a single orienting goal, which was basically Bernie. Yeah. And then um, they were kind of like edgy and fun in the way that like Chapo Trap House was edgy and fun at that moment. The problem is that that's like a bit that lasts for about six months. I like Counterpunch. They're still oh, actually... But Counterpunch decent. have been going for decades. Yeah, and they're, they're still they're cool. Baller, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's a Patrick Coburn for now these days, right? Yeah. I think yeah, so. So I've already made a... a distasteful Alexander Coburn joke his brother. <laughs> um, so, well, we fucked up booking that interview, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, no, sorry, sorry, this was me just, you know, this is a, um, sell, I'm doing some self crit on air to say that I've subscribed to all of these bad publications, ranking them of badness. Um, Jacobin, number one. Yeah, uh, because because it in, infuriating like well the DSA magazine. Oh, that was so much worse. I remember reading their imperialist or imperialism of quotations one, and I was like reading some like this is just CIA like bullshit. Like I couldn't finish it. It was yeah. like like it was just it's, it was no. I, I was I was in this I was in the DSA for about <laughs> two weeks, and then I got their first <laughs> their first edition of Democratic Left, um, and this was yeah like. 20, I want to say like 2015, 2016 or something. I, I joined, I think all my friends had joined and I was like, okay, like cool. Not really, not really into this, but like I'll join. And they sent me the first edition of Democratic Left that had a whole fucking thing on Syria. Oh my God. That made me want to blow my fucking brains out. I was like, are you fucking kidding? It was like the moderate rebels line. Like we yeah. need to be supporting the moderate rebels. And the Kurds. Like they like the yeah. approach of a kind of shit. Yep. And I was just like, oh, it's straight in the trash. And I never renewed my DSA membership after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I, so sorry. So the ranking democratic left by the DSA, that's the worst. Yeah. Jacobin, because Jacobin, um, it's so transparent that it's an op. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even kidding. I really mean it. This is not even a bit. I, I genuinely believe that about like 50% of Jacobin content is um, lifestyle like column filler mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it has no connection to the CIA. I think the rest of it is literally like directed by the CIA. Um, and I think Bascar is, is literally a CIA asset at this point. I just have no reason not to believe it. Like there's no way you, you accidentally arrive at the state department position every goddamn time right. and, and just keep publishing like, a leftist defense of whatever the fuck the State Department is doing this week. A left defense of the Solidarity Union. It was funded by the CIA in Poland, but yeah. it was it's all good. Yeah. So Jacobin, <laughs> Jacobin has a way of boiling my blood um, just because I'm like, this is not a left publication. It's certainly not a socialist publication. It's not even a left publication. Yeah. This is a publication of, of, of like the... This is literally a, a, an organ of, of state power. This is a mouthpiece for the state. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they discussed me. Uh, next up, Mother Jones. Okay. Mostly for being called Mother Jones still. Yeah. Obviously, you know, a proud radical tradition. And yet what you open the pages to, it's all like, um, it's basically vice light. Like it has a lot of this sort of like... Um, gonzo journalist like it's like you know, i went undercover in a prison type thing it's like the writing is actually pretty good in mother jones i'm gonna say like yeah. they've, they've, but but bad 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 it's like how like liberals use the che Guevara shirt mm-hmm. when it's like he would hate all of you and it seemed right. like mother jones who's like a, was a real person yes would hate all these motherfuckers right so 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 keep in mind like mother jones would be like a hundred times less offensive if it wasn't called mother jones um mm-hmm. all right um 
So where are we at? Uh, next up. Current affairs. No, no. There's oh. one worse. Oh. Okay. Twink Revolution Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Annoying because it made me do a lot of work um, and I got sick of doing it. Uh, great content though. But iconic. Iconic and beautiful, beautiful contributors. Like honestly, every single one of them, sweeties. For how limited it was. And it, did, it was a moment. It was a moment. And it ended at the right time. It did. Um, yeah. Next up, Current Affairs Magazine. Yeah. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Had a few like kind of witty short pieces early on. Mm-hmm. I give them credit for like, honestly, um, that there, there, uh, there was an article early on there, which is not actually attributed to anybody. I think it was probably written by Nathan J. Robinson called something like, um, the people in power love Hamilton and this should worry you. And it's one of the greatest like pieces. It was one of the greatest lambasts of, of Hamilton, the musical, I've ever read. Um, really? Yeah. It's very good. No, it's very good. This is the thing. I will never... Uh, Nathan J. Robinson is a pretty good writer. Okay. No, he, he, he I, writes I, I, well. I he, I've never read He's a fancy this, lad. I mean, he's he he went to Harvard and some some other... Yale, maybe, or something. Like he, I think he went to Yale. He's yeah. been to multiple Ivy League schools. Yeah, he, write, he writes very well. Um, he writes too much, often. Um, that's why I said the, the thir- I was not exaggerating when I said there was a 30,000 word essay which was about him not understanding Zizek's like politics um, and it wasn't my- even like it was a, it was a quote unquote takedown but it was also just completely missing the point so anyway so so I, I would say early current affairs had some very funny shit also like Amber Ailey Frost who I still enjoy her writing Didn't Angela write for them as well I think so a lot of people would put articles in, in current affairs yeah Um, and and like Early on, that was very funny. It has, unlike the Twink Revolution magazine, which ended uh, before it got bad, mm-hmm. um, Current Affairs kept going for another four years. Oh, God. And it's just this like completely sort of um, insufferable anarchist Ivy League publication. It's like um, the, the, the Harvard Crimson, mm-hmm. but, but with an anarchist veneer. Yeah, and honestly, I would rather eat fucking broken glass. So anyway, that's my my definitive ranking of oh, and then sorry, uh, you know, and then least annoying, ten thousand other publications, and then like yeah, Counterpunch and shit, like which is cool. oh yeah, Counterpunch like, cool. is chill, yeah, a little wacky sometimes, but very I love wacky. It. It's like a good wacky, but it's it's kind of like upfront about its wackiness. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything like other publications that go in between. Need a number five, which is current affairs or whatever. I like Mint Press News. Yeah, there's some. There's lots of good stuff down the bottom of this ranking of most annoying. Like <laughs> th- th- those are least annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, Tucker Carlson. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The I Daily Stormer. I don't watch any Breitbart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Breitbart News. And actually, um, I'm the board for Breitbart, guys. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Miley Annapolis. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I got a facelift. Uh, good. <laughs> um, we're well, going on to our next topic. Um, everyone's favorite gay couple icons. The are they the booty judges or are they the what, what is Chasten? Who gives name? a shit? I think Chasten Chasten goes by bo- Chasten booty judge. Okay. Um, um, Peter um, Peter Paul Montgomery booty judge <laughs> and Chasten. Who are the fuck his name is? So they've announced they're having a child via adoption. Um, oh, was it by adoption? They were a little cagey on details early on. It was adoption, yeah. Because um, I was worried if like, oh, is it surrogacy? But the way they framed it, and I found some media saying it was adoption. Um, and there's been a lot of mixed feelings in the LGBT, blah, 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 like who gives a fuck um, community. It's not a community. Our community. Um, mm-hmm about like oh the children and the booty judges having children so there's some were like oh we hate them so they shouldn't have kids and i think that the worst argument um i think what really shows what makes their relationship with having a child problematic is a quote um i'm gonna find it you want to keep talking um (laughs) Um, well (laughs) so so um my my first thought on this is that like I don't think Peter Paul Montgomery, mayor, booty judge, has done anything that wasn't calculated and cynical, um, including being gay. Um, I think that was, you know, his handlers. Uh, God damn it. I can't accuse two people of being CIA ops on the same podcast, but like, 
It totally is. Yeah, I mean, there's you a don't lot. spend that much time in Somalia as a like 19 year old if you're not being recruited. Yeah, especially as a gay man. Like, are you telling me he he's not wasn't gay. getting game banged? Yeah, he's not gay. Yeah. Anyway, um, so what I'm thinking <laughs> is that this this child, this beautiful little bundle of joy that they're bringing in to extend their family, uh, will be cherished, loved, supported and wheeled out for publicity events until um, January 19th, 2024, when they sort of expire. Their usefulness is over, when Booty Judge loses whatever election he's running in then. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, then, then uh, sorry, sorry, kiddo, you're on your own. Just give it back, leave it on the street, drive it out into the woods, whatever. That's well, my assumption. No, it is. Because it's like in this piece by The Advocate, you know, great media, they quote mention... Oh, wow. Um, they're high up on my annoying, annoying publication list. This piece by some guy named J.D. Vance basically told the crowd Wait, you don't know who J.D. Vance is? No. The hillbilly allergy guy. Oh, well, they said that. I don't know what the fuck hillbilly allergy was either. Oh, it's the, it, he's, he's a conservative, like... He's, he's like supposedly a sort of like the non neocon conservative. Oh. He's a venture capitalist who went and wrote about his like Appalachian family that he wrote a book called. No, I got that. Yeah. Well, I'm just explaining it to everybody because apparently if you don't know, I don't know. You're very well read. That's the funny thing is, and you've just been missing out on pop culture. Apparently, yeah, you know, everybody's all over the fucking JD Vance's dick. I like to read dead people because I know if they're going to be good <laughs> in the end or not. Um, but he basically told the crowd of conservatives that Democratic leaders felt children don't have a, quote, physical commitment to the future of this country, end quote. And Chasten came out saying, bringing a child into this world can be a long, difficult, and often a heartbreaking process for any family. He wrote, shame on fans for this tactless take. As a father, you should know better. As a wannabe senator, it's clear that it's empathy is in his drawn suit. And then only to go back, so their first adoption process failed because the mother decided she wanted to keep the baby no and no that's not what happened no she did no no i'm 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 telling you that yes that's what they reported yeah i'm saying. telling you she took one look at like uh pete mayor pete yeah i was like this guy's a fucking psycho <laughs> like i'm not no there's like i don't want this child but i don't want him to have it to because he will like splatter his brains over the wall or something um, but there's this quote in response to that. And he's like, Chase, Chase, then um, it's a really weird cycle of anger and frustration and hope. You think it's really happening. You get so excited and then it's gone. And it's like, to me, like that's troubling because you would think a child staying with their birth mother and stuff would be a good thing. Like I think adoption personally is like something you save for like children, actual need but if you can actually keep the family together like that's better i know it's like controversial i'm like the gay rope like yeah, to me whatever. it's like it's like oh like it's like oh, i take uh, a, i take a much more tepid approach here which is to say that like i don't i don't even begrudge chasten um yeah he's just gross or, yeah no, no for like for 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 this specific thing like yeah i, I can understand if, you, if you're if you've if you sort of mentally made the leap of saying yep we're gonna we're gonna start a family you know me Peter Paul Montgomery and our CIA handler. Um, and together we're going to, we're going to expand our family. I can see why you might like making that mental shift. You might start being excited about that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, start dreaming the possibilities, or whatever, like that, that's fine. I, I, have, I have a degree of basic human empathy for that like comment. Um, the, the part that's maybe like troubling Mm-hmm. Is um, how they pass the background check. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly the like um, pizza gate pedophilic. Um, yeah, being the Democratic Party should being... not let you. Like, you should not be allowed to adopt a child. No, I'm sorry. they haven't like, paid attention. Unequivocally, no. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I like whatever. I just, I think, um, I, have a I don't trust Ma- Mayor Peter. Uh, to not do anything cynical. So like, is this child really something that like he's giving to, to chasten as, as a sort of um, a bargaining chip hmm. or is this another electoral like, cause this is a guy who practiced Obama mannerisms in the mirror from like 
the ages of like 17 to 27. And yeah. it's creepy as shit. We are bound together by the audacity of our hope and defining the character of our characters. That is what this nation says to us as people, as mm. Americans. God bless you all. You're like, what the fuck are you saying? He can just like generate this nonsense, like a sort of Markov chain. I feel like because they're so prim and calculated, I'd also wouldn't be surprised because they mentioned babies. If it's like literally just a surrogacy and they're bringing it off as adoption because it appears better. And you can't know because like you can have NDAs and stuff to prevent sure. the mothers from explaining it. So I'm like, the fact that it's like well, CIA a newborn of- baby, it's like, oh, um, this, this is all fake. This is. Yeah, well, didn't Tan France and husband. Uh- just have a surrogate baby. Yeah, and some other like Democrats who like have surrogate children um, were like celebrating the Pete Booty Judge shit. And it's like, you're horrible. Like, I'm sorry. Like, surrogacy's horrible. And Well, I already spilled the beans on this on Twitter. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, the, the, um, it's, it's, it's true. Um, it's actually me and Sam have uh, been adopted by Pete and Chaston. SOS twin. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and the best part about this is that um, we have. Uh, exactly the relationship that um, you know children should have with their gay parents utter disdain and, yeah. and verging on homophobic bigotry honestly mine's always homophobic towards <laughs> yeah exactly um, I don't experience homophobia often but gotta say uh, when I do it's a sacky <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, yeah not not a uh, like but this way, uh, I'm, I'm, I think, I think adoption, at least if you're contrasting the ideas of like, how, how does one build a family in this horrible, alienated, atomized world? Mm-hmm. Adoption is a perfectly nice way to do it. Um, assuming you're not using some like weird commercial broker to do it. It's the only ethical way to do it. Yeah. And that's, that's great. I think that's lovely. Um, well, well, you say it's the only ethical way to do it. I mean, Fine. getting, Go getting knock drunk up. in a bar, you know. Okay, um, well, like knocking up a woman and having a baby with them, that's also Right, fine, and then, you know, um, and then paying, paying them for child support as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, that's all fine. It's it's only the fact that it's Mayor Peter and, and spouse um, that uh, gives me pause about this particular situation just because I, I think, like, didn't they get a dog... Oh, they have, oh, this is the best part of the piece. So in the very last line, they mention they currently have two different dogs. And I'm like, those yeah, aren't one children. Dead. One of dead. Fur babies. Are they um, dead? I didn't know. Well, this was always the, the claim is that uh, Pete, like after losing a, a primary or whatever, would just go like... S- just kill the dog. So the reverse of Obama, we're like, he bought a dog if he won. And then yeah. he's like, I will murder this fucking dog. If you make me lose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ch- Chaston, uh, you know, who I think is kind of a cringe character, but also it's a bit of an unwitting stooge in the CIA play. Um, you know, if you need assistance, like we are here for you, we can yeah. get you out. Chaston's like, if Kelly Clarkson was a man, like, like, think about it. Am yeah, I not wrong? No, you're right. No, it's you're like, I just bought this. I'm like, they're a little like, if you make Kelly Clarkson into a man in the filter, they have the same man. Well, Kelly Clarkson has a brother who actually does look like Chasten. I think we're connecting the dots. Yeah, what's Chasten his name? Um, God, is- I'm, it's escaping me right now. I can see his face. Uh, the other. Osborne but can Chasten cook as good as Kelly, or not Kelly Clarkson? I'm, who am I thinking of? Rachel Ray. They're also very similar. They're all kind of very similar people. Huh. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. So you were saying Clarkson. I was thinking of Kelly Clarkson. Oh, I think he was Osborne. Oh, <laughs> they're all Kelly Clarkson, Rachel Ray, and Kelly Osborne are all kind of the same person. They're just like totally. different hairstyles. That's true. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, enough. You know, we, we muzzle off. Yeah. Um, you know, congrats c- on the baby. Congratulations. Uh, I'm glad you didn't like surrogate. Good job. I'm glad that the CIA covered up your surrogacy. Yeah, you're um, not yeah. Um, yeah, for really, it's honestly very impressive for a for a completely heterosexual young psychopath to end up adopting a child with another man. That's that's honestly progress. That's it is uh, progress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, speaking diaper. of pulling out, 
I was going to say it's a neurodivergent uh, representation we all need. <laughs> oh, I was going to say in terms of the creation of the baby. Um, oh, well, that's also nice. As in, you're not going to make any babies. Speaking of pulling out. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I fucked up the segue. We're out of practice. I'm sorry, I'm sick. Um, Afghanistan, we pulled out. Yeah. It was unsatisfying for everybody. It was a mess. Yeah, just we, like we just sprayed everywhere. Just like a straight frat bow pulling out. It's like, oh, a mess. Yep, you made a mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're a mess, Joe. <laughs> not, yeah, a, Joe. We're gonna teach Joe Biden the rhythm method, um, uh, <laughs> so he doesn't have to pull out at the wrong time. Um, yeah, think of her cycle. Um, so uh, a lot of hot takes. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't even have one. Do you have a hot take? Um. I've been sick this week, and I just couldn't quite muster the energy to have a hot take about this. Well, no, sorry. Wait, let me let me do my hot take, and then you can be actually well reasoned. You've been reading the news, um, yeah. Like the ultimate frustration that you you know that that like dominates my mind is we shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yes. Right, and so the problem is that like any arguments that follow from that start to feel very feeble. Mm -hmm. because you're all like, well, we should have left in 2010 when we, you know, when Bush set the original timeline for Lee. It's like, yeah, 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 but we we shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. No, it's a lot of, um, I know we're doing this right now where it's like people in America talking about an issue that we have no connection to besides our military being there. But it's like, because, you know, like, hey, we support everyone becomes like a Middle Eastern correspondent once ever anything Yeah, that's happens. why I don't have a hot take. Yeah. Um, and there's been plenty of awful ones where people are like, oh, this is all because the U.S. funded Taliban during the Soviet era. There was no Taliban. Like, no, excuse like, me. We dedicate this podcast to the brave Mujahideen fighters of Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we funded the Mujahideen for the record. Yeah. Not, which, not the Taliban. Which... Which allowed you became the Taliban. Which people don't realize is like not one group. It's a bunch of groups yeah. committing Islamic jihad. Right. It was all the jihadist like groups and literally anybody could get money from the US at the time if they were willing to go like do some Islamic jihad against the Soviets. There was also some Maoists and Shias, I think, in there as well, who joined a lot, even though the majority was That's like hot. Sh- um it was it was great. Um but everyone's like posting about that and it's like, no, they appeared later. Um, I, I imagine libertarians are mad right now because if history has shown us anything, the Taliban aren't libertarians because the two things they actually were successful in is destroying opium <laughs> and ending the Bachabazi, which is like oh, yeah. the pederastic relationships, which was very popular, primarily yes, so- in the Tajikistani and the Pashtun cultures, which is funny because the Taliban is viewed as like just like an Islamic group, but it's actually like a combination of the Pashtun culture there. Um, but they're like, yeah, the Islam rolls out, and we're we're actually very strict on like you know the pederastic kidnapping of boys to be like lovers who you dress in like girls' clothes and make right. dance so, for you. So, 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 I, and I only interject here because in about two thousand six, right? You, you have to remember I was very animated against the Iraq War, certain like. 2002, 2003. Yeah. Um, Me too. Yeah, you were a child. Um, So anyway, uh, I learned because I watched some like 60 minutes documentary in about 2006 about the the Bachibazi thing, which is like literally dancing boys, right? For sex as well. Yeah, well, sorry, no, I think... Yeah, but they're dancing boys. I think it's literally called... I think it literally translates as like dancing boys or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the idea is, yes, these are... are, um, I mean, pederastic relationships of very, very young boys often who are, yeah, used as sex slaves to kind of important figures. But it's a very limited cultural thing. This is not like, this was the, the like, the, when I was like, oh, wait, there's a culture of, uh, gay sex Sign like, me up. No. i was like i was like oh, wait i'm back in on the like this is good actually um, yeah but uh so this was pretty widely practiced among the now now fallen afghani uh regime yeah so they, when they have the afghan uh what, what did they they had a name that they i don't remember but like they, in afghan whatever the afghan government that is now gone and replaced by the taliban again 
Taliban didn't practice this. No, they when they took power, I think in ninety six, they basically made like this is illegal. They're, they're like the Berto also- Center. They're like we have one rule: yeah. absolutely no gay shit. And they also make homosexuality like the that sentence. But I think, I which think, honestly, I'm I have, like bring it back. And it was Leslie Funberg who's like brought about this thing. And the only real deaths were like the punishment is being crushed by like stone walls. It was all like pederastic relationships, at least in like the public. I think a lot of people like. Bring I'm it. sure there's I, like there's, yeah. I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to be one of these people who pretends that like. Life is rosy for. Uh, oh no, it's horrible. Gay, um, gay uh, Afghani's or whatever, but like. We over, we consistently overplay the horrors. Um, yeah, in some places, and then we underplay the horrors in others. Yeah, and it's almost like it might be part of a narrative that uses, say, like LGBT rights broadly as a cudgel against uh, countries who are not conforming to our particular imperial order. Is that? Is that crazy? Am yeah. I off base here? Well, actually, you say LGBT rights might be bolstering imperialism. Well, also women's rights has preserved, which is kind of funny women's because rights. women's rights was like a very like Iraq War, it's like early Afghani invasion kind of talking of point. Them, yes, and now they've it's really surged back, and I'm like kind of astounded because like I thought LGBT rights imperialism was going to be like the main talking point for the next like decade and now it's kind of like we're back baby it's 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 women women. good job girls you did it yeah who run the world girls (laughs) who run the world taliban exactly um (laughs) and and therefore all girls should be um refugees political refugees yeah they should all come to the u.s political asylum yeah we take a hundred percent of the afghani women i mean i do feel for people there like I don't think the Taliban or anything's a progressive force. No, for the no, they're shitty. Whatever. In reality, it's just going to be like another version of like exploitation of different powers of the country. Like, well, um, I, I mean, the 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 point that the Taliban made, and I can't believe I'm like, you know, the Taliban made a really great point the other day, which was they were like, you accept Saudi Arabia? <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I, I can condemn. Um, both yeah they're, i mean they're, whatever they're giant reactionaries mm-hmm. and uh you can condemn them in their own terms i think what's interesting is to watch the media in this situation who are really really fucking mad at biden right yeah. now who has been able to do no wrong to date right he could drive a car with no steering wheel he could um just like say the n-word three times during a speech and nobody would report it but the one thing he did was he kind of ruined this war that the media basically created in the first place. He even delayed it for them. It was supposed to be May, according to Trump. Right, but you know what? That's not rating seasons. Yeah. You gotta, you know, gotta, gotta get it in for sweeps. Um, so anyway, I, you know, that it's been interesting to watch that, and like, I don't necessarily know if Biden is ex- exercising political bravery or Biden's whether not doing this. Well, that's what I, that's what I'm uh, like. Whatever he was forced to stand up and recite a speech where he's like, "The buck stops with me, bucko," and then he just said the n word three times. It was really strange, <laughs> um, but like he at least is sort of saying, "I am the person doing this," mm-hmm. uh, which like okay, like respect. You also were the person that sent the troops in, in the first place, um, and it's like this eighteen minute speech he gave, or whatever. He sort of like half saying that was a wrong thing. Like, it's a very strange... It's very chomsky ass where just like this, like, old man being weaponized <laughs> to, to tout a narrative. Well, it's... Yeah, but it's also the, like, um that it's... You get to disagree with any position you've held or anybody else ever held when it sort of has no cost to you. Right. Um And so he's, you know, he's he's getting crucified in the press right now. But it's like, well, you became president off the back of your record of supporting the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. Maybe, maybe, um, well, yeah, exactly. So, so I'm saying like, it's really cool that like all the things this was going to do for his, for him, Mm -hmm. they're all done, right? There's nowhere else to go from here. He's president. Yeah. So it's really cool when you get to be president, you start being like, yeah, actually that was a mistake. I'm, I'm anti-war too. You know, I share your, (laughs) I share your sentiments. He's Um, not anti-war. No, of course not. Yeah. I mean, he'll be back to the the best part is the press will 
not give him a single fucking break until he like just goes and bombs Yemen or Syria or somewhere like who gives a fuck where it is he's bombing? He just has to bomb something. Well, and then everyone would be like, we're back on board, baby. Well, I think it's interesting, the our collaboration of like the timing of the pullout of Afghanistan and the media thing that's not being reported is Ethiopia and Eritrea, where like Samantha Powers, who runs mm. USAID, I believe, yes, um, literally visited because of this alleged... Yugoslavia esque um, controversy of the um, TPLF in a contested region and there, and basically trying to balkanize that. And that's had very silent coverage, minus few like, oh, this anti genocide hero, Spam Powers, is coming to save them and fight against this regime. And it's, 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 I mean, you know, like we end wars, we are moving locations. It's like, oh, South China right. Sea, North Horn of Africa. And it's like, oh, we're not going to stop. We're just going to new it's areas moving. where we're there's reinvesting. We're um we're doing what you call an, an a, you know a, a portfolio rebalancing. We must have a constant number of wars going. Yeah. We just you know sometimes you're over invested in certain wars and you want to just reinvest in other areas. Um. So it's it's just part of a prudent um you know investment strategy. You also already have the media calling for new war in Afghanistan. You have like Washington Post and CNN be like titles saying like. Oh, we need to support the Mujahideen against the Taliban. <laughs> and um, Afghanistan has $1 trillion worth of rare minerals, including one of the biggest With lithium, lithium amounts, yeah. which the world needs. And I'm yeah, like, the world it's, needs. it's not even like hidden. It's like this blatant, like, we're yeah. going to go back to war and push it. And it's like, okay, like. I, I mean, I, so the, the one critique I think, which is fair, is that it was a messy withdrawal. It was going to be, though. Um, well, it's just because you had generals saying 11 days ago, like, we have no evidence that the government will fall. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, four days after that or whatever, like, the government's falling. Um, so just given we have such an expensive, uh, you know, military industrial complex that literally is where all our money goes, like, any any dollar you've ever paid in tax mm-hmm. um, has pretty much gone to that. Uh, the rest of it's deficit spending. We just borrow to pay for literally the rest of our government activities. We're just paying for like Department of Homeland Security, NSA, CIA, and the military. Um, the fact that they didn't suspect that maybe this would become a bit of a clusterfuck mm-hmm. is very silly. Um, and, then, you know, people have written about this already and good on them. Um, the... Um, uh, you know, I, like I, I do think there's, there's, there's styles of withdrawing, as in the styles of pulling out. Yeah. Um, and you can either just yank it out unexpectedly and make a real fucking mess, mm-hmm. or you can make it sexy. You can make it a sort of sexy pulling out slowly, like you know, make it part of the thing, um, and not make an unexpected mess. Yeah. And the fact that. The, well, and this this is like, I don't know, you and I have talked about this, I guess, about like, was this a um, intentional handover of power to mm-hmm. people who are essentially new allies in the region? As yeah. in, you have to imagine there have been plenty of backroom deals brokered of this style where right. the Biden administration basically sat down with the Taliban and said, look, we can do business. Our hard line is that gender studies degrees at, Kabul University keep going Mm -hmm. and you know as long as you can guarantee that like you can have it the country is yours um and I keep going back and forth when I start seeing these generals like fucking General Miller or whatever that's fuck the the woke general the one who wants to learn more about critical race theory standing up and saying we didn't see any evidence that uh we see no evidence the country will collapse and then the country collapses literally like four days later um or rather is 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 liberated. I think I should use that terminology. But like, I, I know go, you've gone back and forth as well. I go back it, and was forth. It, was it a controlled handover or were they literally this fucking dumb? I think, honestly, the U.S. misunderstood how influential the Taliban has been over the last two decades with the primarily rural population. Like, people forget Afghanistan is extremely poor. Like, it's not a highly urbanized society and a lot of this place is we'll like... We'll be greeted as liberators. 
but like they break they, they the state had no legitimacy just kind of like how even like iraq government we put in place as like shifted folks like oh we want russia to like help us instead of the u.s because like they're actually more effective on that front um and i think i see a lot of things where like canada won't recognize the new taliban-led government you have the imf um, ending agreements and also like the u.s freezing bank accounts of the afghani government and that makes the me the taliban this, yeah the taliban left afghani government right. um which makes me think it wasn't a, a planned handover. I think. Well, that could just be the left hand not talking to the right hand. Don't forget. I think like, though the issue is like they know there's still leverage, and because it's Islamist militants, they're not really a consistent force in advancing an anti-U.S. or anti-imperialist cause. They'll go whichever way helps their jihadi militancy. So if the U.S. does things that help them, which we do very well with Islamist militants. I think they could easily cohabitate with like agreements and trade deals and stuff. Right. In the same way, like the Taliban's are already in meetings with like Russia and China. While also those countries prepare like their borders to make sure Islamism doesn't spread over. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I sort of, um, that's what I think is interesting is this is not your, your, your father's Taliban. I mean, if you think about it, it's been 20 years, mm-hmm. all these leaders who are now, you know, dancing to Drake and um, working out in the gym for the first time, whatever, in the presidential palace. Riding recent park rides, yeah. eating ice cream. I mean, they were they were children yeah. when the, the first Taliban fell, effectively. Um, so I do think it's interesting what concessions they are very publicly pronouncing. They're all like, oh, women's right. No, we just want the hijab. Like, they're like, as long as you get that, that's that's Islamic law. But um, no, of course, women have the right to work and, you know, to do whatever. So there's been this sort of weird, like, um, put it this way, they know their audience. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they're reactionary as hell, like whatever. I mean, but but I, it's I, sort of interesting. It, like, it's interesting just to see, like, what they, what optics they are trying to control right now. I think they've also learned from their prior mistakes is when... The Mujahideen did succeed in toppling the democratic socialist government of Afghanistan. The issue they faced that really fucked them over was all the other groups of different ethnic and religious tendencies all started fighting against the Taliban leadership. And now they're kind of... Rightoids fight fight just like leftoids do. They're (laughs) proclaiming to be more inclusive. And I think they're abandoning more of the Pashtuni, like the Pashtunam culture which tends to be like a more strict than like a lot of the islamic law yeah like women don't get anything in her inheritance at least in islam that's not fully the case so i think they're kind of doing more of an like a iran versus a saudi arabia does that make sense well i but also i mean saudi arabia also tries to be like very kind of hardline but also mainline islam yeah and so the u.s clearly is happy with that like Mm -hmm. The thing that you think about, like what the drums of war sounded like in 2001, it was, you know, okay, rogue state, something, 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 terrorism. Um, But it was also like they banned TV. So you know what? Like, just don't ban TV and you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like the the New York Times is not going to write articles critical critical of a Taliban that is like, women can drive. They're Mm going to be like, yeah, slay queen girl boss. Um, Trust me, you don't want to drive. Driving sucks. I'm yeah, sorry. I drove in Chicago. <laughs> sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, as I, said, I still don't really have a hot take on this. No, it's except, too early to tell. Except I feel to like. say, um, just the media fucking sucks. On and I'm this glad issue. the U.S. is leaving. Yeah, I mean, we we had to. We had to sometime. It was never going to be um, clean because honestly, once we once we inserted ourselves into into that um, and really just. Uh, like pounded around, uh, yeah. it, there was going to be a mess when you pulled out, especially when you stay in too long and don't know when to pull out. Exactly when you know when nobody really wanted it still to be in there, but yeah, um, yeah it was going to come out at some point. And honestly, you just never know what you're going to find. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I think that's enough from us. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.